So hi there, I'm Catherine Solomon. I'm the e-moderator for, for today's webinar, and I am delighted to introduce our speaker, Camille, who will be introducing the foundation's brand new EAL assessment, MOOC. So MOOC stands for Massive Online Open Course, and it's, it's one of the first ones the foundation has done. So we're really pleased to have Camille uh, Long, who has designed and developed this webinar. Uh, to talk about it today. Um, so the course essentially provides an introduction to the design structure and purpose behind the Bell Foundation's EAL assessment framework and provides numerous opportunities for practitioners to practice using it with the aid of samples of speaking and writing, which Camille will be able to talk to. Uh, so Camille joined the Bell Foundation in September 2018, and he works as our digital resource developer. Before joining the foundation, Camille spent 18 years teaching English as a foreign language and English as an additional language, first in Poland and subsequently in England and Scotland in mainstream secondary classrooms. He was an EAL coordinator at a, a secondary school, EAL consultant and trainer and writer for education periodicals um, and also in a, an EAL event organizer. So without further ado, I will pass over to you, Camille. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and it's uh, it's great to uh, to see so many of you join us, and we are very excited about uh, launching this uh, MOOC course, this on-demand free course uh, in EAL assessment. So, okay, so let's uh, let's get started. Uh, so first, uh, okay, so uh, uh, Catherine already mentioned that MOOC stands for Massive Open uh, Online Open Course, and so. Uh, uh, that's uh, one of our first courses of this kind. Uh, and so today we are going to be uh, covering the following territory, as you can see here <clears throat> uh, on this slide. So first uh, we'll tell you about uh, uh, why uh, we have chosen uh, this particular topic, EAL assessment, as a subject, our rationale uh, for developing this particular course. And then further, this is the biggest section, uh, we'll look at uh, the course's aims, outcomes, and then structure and content. And during this section, towards the end of it, I will be uh, also sharing my screen with you, and I will, I will show you, we'll, we'll go to module uh, together, and we'll show you uh, in real time what the course actually looks like on the screen, how you enroll, and uh, what you actually see. And we'll look at a couple of uh, examples of different activities. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we'll just kind of look again uh, uh, just to make sure that this is clear to everyone how to enroll yourself on the course, and then uh, and then we'll have uh, some time for questions uh, at the end. So that's the plan. So we start we're starting with this first section. Uh, why we developed this course? Okay. So uh, so in considering the importance of of EAL assessment, it's important to put it in context first. So according to the last school census uh, uh, from January 2013, uh, 2023, sorry, uh, there were 20.2% uh, uh, learners deemed to have English as an additional language. So these are the learners who, in the definition of the government, have been exposed to a language at home that is known or believed to be other than English. So that means that uh, one in five learners in our schools uh, uses English as an additional language. So this makes this group of learners, we would say, are uh, large enough to warrant our significant attention. So that's the first thing. Secondly, uh, such high numbers mean that most, if not all teachers, uh, are most likely already working in multilingual settings or will be at some point uh, during their teaching career. And uh, yet we know from um, a recent Department for Education report that teachers do not feel prepared to teach in multilingual classrooms compared to all other working areas, uh, uh, training areas, sorry. So uh, in this report, uh, working lives of teachers and leaders are wave one. Uh, this is from April, 2023. Uh, it is demonstrated that many teachers uh, lack confidence uh, at being able to adapt to uh, the needs of learners using EAL. So only 73% reported such confidence uh, compared to 93% having confidence to provide opportunities for all pupils to learn uh, essential knowledge, skills, and principles of the subject that they teach of their own subject. So this lower figure is a concerning one 
uh, given that a fifth of our popula school population is uh, multilingual. And one more slide on numbers. Uh, this, is, uh, this one is going to be from uh, the OCD Teaching and Learning International Survey, TALIS for short. Uh, and so they found that, in, that this was in 2018 when the survey was done, 27% uh, of uh, teachers in England worked in classrooms where at least 10% of the pupils had their first language that is different from the language of instruction. Uh, nearly half of all teachers teach in diverse classrooms, as the share of teachers working in multilingual settings has increased by 14% uh, from 28% in 2013 to 41% in 2018. Now, so uh, this need on, uh, to focus on supporting learners using EAL is therefore great. And by developing this course, uh, we hope to support school staff in supporting uh, multilingual learners. Okay, so moving on. Uh, so the Bell Foundation strongly advises schools to assess learners' uh, uh, English because research leaves little doubt that a pupil's likelihood to succeed is strongly linked to their proficiency in English uh, and in this, uh, uh, the language of instruction. And uh, so this is, of course, English uh, in our schools. Proficiency in English is central to understanding achievement and levels of uh, need among uh, pupils using EAL. And effective assessment, which includes assessment of four domains of language use, that is to say, listening, speaking, reading and viewing and writing, helps teachers identify that a learner's English language proficiency can be very different across different skills. So for example, much higher in speaking than in writing or the other year around, depending on the learner. Uh, when teachers understand their multilingual pupils' proficiency in English and their learning needs, they can adapt their teaching accordingly in light of this knowledge. Uh, pitching your teaching resources to support uh, learners at the right level, relevant to their English language proficiency, becomes possible when you have a good understanding of how proficient in English they actually are. And so because EAL assessment is so crucial for setting uh, multilingual learners the English language targets and uh, uh, selecting appropriate strategies, uh, sorry, and selecting appropriate targets allows for selecting good strategies and resources, uh, it seems that we could say that assessing learners' English language proficiency can be seen as the foundation of all support, of all EAL support. Now, the label EAL masks significant variety uh, relating to English language proficiency. So uh, the term, uh, the phrase uh, being exposed to uh, languages other than English tells us nothing, of course, about, uh, you know, uh, about whether a learner is brand new to English, uh, whether their proficiency approximates that of first English language speaker, whether they can construct simple uh, sentences on the basic tenses, and so on and so forth. It doesn't tell us whether they are more competent in writing or speaking, whether they are able to express a view about a story, uh, or uh, uh, predict what the result of an experiment in science uh, might be, or retell events in the life of Martin Luther King. So all of these in the English education context will be presented or produced for the English language medium. Uh, and so on to the last slide in this section. So therefore, we developed this course as EAL assessment is key to all subsequent effective uh, support. It informs setting English language learning targets within the curriculum and the selection of appropriate EAL strategies. So the importance of accurate EAL assessment cannot be understated. And linked to this is the need to, uh, for school staff training. So if learners in your school are to benefit from accurate and effective EAL assessment, or then, uh, and subsequent setting them appropriate targets and uh, selecting uh, uh, good EAL strategies, then teaching staff in your school are not only uh, EAL professionals, uh, well, they need to be trained in how to assess English language proficiency in our case, using our uh, EAL assessment framework for schools, and then how to interpret uh, uh, the results of those assessments to inform high quality uh, teaching in the classroom. Okay, so that's uh, in a nutshell why we've uh, uh, developed this course first. So I'm going to move on now to look uh, 
closely at the course. So we're going to start with uh, aims and outcomes first, and then we're going to look at uh, the particular elements of the course uh, themselves. Uh, and as I said, this is the longest section uh, today. Okay. So first, uh, the aims. So in this course, uh, you will learn how the Bell Foundation's EAL uh, assessment framework for school is structured. Uh, you will have uh, numerous opportunities to practice uh, using the framework based on the samples of speaking and writing that are provided on the course. And each time you are provided uh, with feedback on these tasks in video format. Now, these activities will allow you to assess your learners' EAL proficiency uh, skills with confidence. And also in so doing, uh, you will be able to monitor the uh, English language proficiency progress, send them, uh, set them relevant uh, targets and choose strategies. Uh, now, just to add to that, uh, some important facts before we move on. Uh, so the first thing is that this course is completely free to enroll yourself onto and to use. Now, of course, it means that any individual teacher can, uh, uh, can do so. Uh, without any cost to themselves. But it also means that if you are a school leader, uh, you could potentially enroll all of your staff on this course. Uh, it has been designed uh, to be completed in three hours, making it manageable for time for teachers as well. So now let's now move to the structure of the course. So. This course has been divided into three modules. I will describe these one by one momentarily, but just broadly speaking first. Module one is an introduction to what the EAL uh, uh, assessment framework uh, by the Bell Foundation is and the basics of working with it. In module two, uh, you will have a number of opportunities to practice using the framework to assess speaking and writing of different learners, setting them targets and choosing strategies for them. And there is a stage-by-stage -stage video feedback uh, provided by the Bell Foundation. And in module three, uh, you will assess a learner's writing skills in one go, uh, certain targets to strategies before receiving feedback from the foundation. And at the end of it all, uh, we'll ask you to give us some uh, uh, feedback and then you will be able to uh, download your uh, course completion certificate, which is automatically generated by Moodle. Uh, we'll look at that uh, in a moment as well. So let's now have a look at, in a little bit more detail what those modules actually uh, cover and entail. So module one. So uh, here we'll, uh, we'll have a look at why EL assessment is important. Uh, uh, then key aspects uh, uh, related to um, EAL assessment. Uh, you look at the basics of the Bell Foundation's EAL assessment framework for schools, as to say how those pages look like, uh, uh, what uh, what is in those grids, uh, uh, how to uh, interpret the descriptors of different skills, and so on and so forth. Uh, um, and uh, finally, uh, we'll introduce what we call ATS sequence, which is uh, the process of going, uh, starting from assessment, then uh, uh, setting learners targets, and then uh, based on that, choosing relevant EAL strategies for them. So the term ATS is something that you uh, will see used throughout uh, the course. Okay, uh, module two. So let's have a look. So here, we are going to start working more closely with the EAL frame, uh, assessment frameworks, individual descriptors, uh, uh, and how, uh, which descriptors fall under which band. Uh, and then uh, practice assessing learners' speaking and uh, writing skills with uh, feedback there. And uh, same tasks include setting targets for those learners and selecting strategies for them. And as I said before, in module two, this is done sort of step by step. So you, uh, so you assess first, and then you get feedback from us. And then uh, next, you move on to targets. Uh, then uh, you set those learning targets. You get video feedback from us. And then the last stage in the same way uh, that is done is uh, uh, selecting strategies uh, for them. Okay, and in module three, 
Uh, there's a little bit more practice of EL assessment, uh, mapping language onto descriptors. So uh, there's two ways to working uh, to, uh, to to assess learners. One is you start from the descriptors and you try to find evidence in the samples of your learners' writing uh, for those uh, descriptors, or the other way around, uh, which is uh, you look at uh, what language has been produced and then you look at how this maps onto the uh, onto the descriptors of the framework. And so in module three, what we start is with this latter one. Um, and then the final task uh, in that, we're asking you to assess a sample of a learner's writing. There's three to choose from, uh, select target for the learner and to choose uh, appropriate uh, strategies. And uh, that's it. And after that, uh, uh, you would be able to download your certificate at the end of the course. Uh, okay. Now, um, let's move on to what kind of activities are included on the course. And in about 10 minutes time, when I share my screen, you are going to see this also, some of these in action, uh, so to speak. But let's just have a look what kind of activities we've incorporated. So uh, it was important to us uh, that you can engage with the different tasks and guide us in different ways and for different media. So there are a number of different videos on the course to watch. Many of these are interactive meaning that uh, uh, at some points they would stop, stop to ask you a question. So you can see two examples here uh, where you can ask a multiple choice question, or in this second example, uh, in to provide your choice of a band uh, after assessing a learner's uh, sample of English to use. So some other videos uh, are not interactive, but they're just there for you to watch. These video, uh, so the videos where we provide you with feedback are typically uh, that way. Uh, they are non-interactive, but there are others. So for example, in one series um, of videos, um, you, um, it's in module two, uh, it, this series of videos demonstrates assessment in real time. One of the foundation's trainers over the course of 20 minutes talks you through the entire assessment, setting targets, and selecting EL strategies uh, uh, sequence. You can watch that as well. Uh, OK, uh, what other types of activities uh, we have? Beyond these interactive activities embedded in the video, there are other interactive activities uh, on offer. So in module one, we included a small interactive textbook. So you can see the three sections here, and you work your way through them. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the, these presents uh, in one place different aspects of framework design, structure, and purposes behind creating it. And this includes different activities such as drag and drop activities and checkbox uh, questions. You will receive instant feedback on these. Now, here's another one of a drag and drop uh, activity. This one is in module two and aims to familiarize you with working with the individual descriptors in the framework. So uh, here, the, uh, uh, the idea is to drag and drop the different descriptors, the, the gray boxes, onto the different proficiency bands. Um, in, in yet another activity, you're asked to match, again, drag and drop different areas of language. So for example, uh, use of present simple tense and basic connectives to the excerpts from the actual language used by a learner in a sample. Uh, provided on the course. There is uh, there's also a particular type of a discussion forum where you will be able to read our feedback on a task, uh, and uh, which is also provided in an audio form and contributions of others only after you had made your own post answering uh, our question. So you write a post first and then you get access to our feedback and everything that uh, everyone else has written uh, in the past. Um, outside of the tasks themselves, we also have provided typed up transcripts of all the speaking and writing samples on the course uh, to facilitate uh, your work assessing these during the course. Uh, in terms of assessing speaking, we encourage you to always listen to the recording first, but having a transcript can be invaluable. And in terms of writing, writing samples, uh, you will always have a scan of a learner's handwriting, but as you, I'm sure you will know, sometimes hand, uh, a learner's handwriting can be difficult to decipher. And so provided, we provided you with a typed up transcript, transcript to go with those as well for your convenience. Um, and then uh, the, uh, uh, at the end of the course, uh, we've got uh, 
the course feedback. So we're going to ask you to uh, complete our course feedback survey, which should only take five minutes to do. And of course, it will allow us to improve uh, this course and any other such courses in the future. So your views are very, very important to us. And uh, this is uh, this is the certificates uh, that's going to be generated uh, for you. Of course, it has my name here. You, you are going to get uh, your own, uh, which can be very easily downloaded uh, from the last part of the course. Um, okay. So almost there with this overview before we look at the model itself. Uh, but just one more thing. There's some things that are specific to this kind of course, this MOOC course. So this is a, a, an on-demand massive open online course. And as such, it will be different from the majority of other courses that the Bell Foundation has on offer. So because, the, uh, because it's a MOOC, there will be no tutors on the course. However, if you need some support, for instance, in technical matters, please email us at info at bellfoundation.org.uk and we'll answer your questions. Uh, again, because there are no tutors on the course or feedback to you on the tasks uh, you're going to complete is offered to you in a digital format. Uh, so in most cases, as I already said, it's through videos. But there are other forms, uh, such as reading our feedback, and there are also audio recordings to listen to. Uh, because it's an on-demand course, of course, you can work entirely at your own pace. So the, as we said before, it's a three-hour course. But of course, you can do this in one afternoon or stretch these tasks across a number of days, weeks, or months. It's entirely up to you. Uh, and finally, this course is open 24-7, uh, which means that you can engage with it whenever you want. Once you enroll onto the course, uh, you will actually have two years to complete it. Although uh, um, um, if a user is not active for three months, then they will, they will, they will, they will get a warning. Uh, so you, you, you will need to be, uh, log in now and again, but you can actually uh, have uh, up to two years to complete it. So lo lots of time uh, there, okay. So uh, now I'm going to show you what this course actually looks like. So I'm going to momentarily, I'm going to share my screen with you and demonstrate some of the tasks on the course from the different modules. Uh, we're also going to look at uh, right at the end of the, uh, how to download the certificate uh, at the end of this. Uh, and then after that, uh, uh, there's just a couple of slides back on the presentation and there'll be time for questions. So let me stop the presentation for just a bit and go to my browser. And I will, um, just one second. Okay, so just uh, refresh this screen just to make sure that, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, hopefully you're able to see this. Uh, so I am logged in. Uh, as a user. Um, so when you've logged in, this is what you're going to see. Uh, our course is uh, stored under Massive Open Online Courses MOOC category, which you can access from here, or you can click on categories and reach the same category from here. So if I click this, uh, I'm going to see these two courses there. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to use the primary version of it. There is a primary version, the secondary version. So obviously you would take the one that is relevant to your face, but so for today's purposes, I'm going to use the primary one. So I'm going to click view course. The first thing is uh, we are going to enroll onto the course and that's simply done by clicking this button, enroll. Okay, so we are in the course now. Uh, so you can see that uh, the main part is on the right uh, hand side of the screen and you've got the uh, all the modules and all the tasks uh, here on the left. Uh, so we are going to look at uh, some of the activities there, not all of them, of course, because we, we don't have the time to look at everything. Uh, but uh, so uh, the overview of the course is the video that is just uh, down here, uh, but we're going to jump to uh, why assess proficiency in English task 1.1 1 .1, uh, from module one first. 
So uh, this is an example of an interactive video, although it's a, a quite a simple one. You can play that video and then in certain places, the video will stop and ask you uh, uh, a question. And then after that, you can keep, once you've answered that, uh, that question, then you can uh, continue watching and then you will get feedback from the video um, on it. So whenever you see these little dots here, that that is where the question is. It's important to watch the entire video, so so the system marks you as uh, having completed that task. So uh, this is the first. Uh, now we also have task one point three here, which is the textbook I was talking about. Uh, so again, you've got these three parts uh, here. Um, a lot of interactive activities you can engage us with full screen, there are buttons for maximizing or minimizing screen. So if you feel that this is too small, you can just uh, do that. So this is one of those uh, videos that you simply can watch. Uh, uh, it's not interactive, but uh, there will be links here uh, to, uh, for example, this one uh, uh, takes you to our website where you can download the EL assessment framework. Because so obviously you're going to need this. Uh, to work with on the course. Um, so I'll just go back to full screen here. Uh, but in the second of these, you will see that you've got uh, a drag and drop activity where you're asked to match the uh, names of the different bands, proficiency bands, to uh, the different uh, letters. So uh, you can just drag it like this. And at the end of a lot of these activities, you can simply click check and you will get feedback whether uh, this has been uh, correct. Um, and uh, so that's another kind of activity. Uh, the third one here as well, this one is uh, a checkbox activity with one question. And then one task 1.4, we'll look at one more activity from, uh, from uh, uh, module one. So here uh, is the introduction to the EAL assessment sequence. And in this case, you can click these boxes and uh, you've got additional information about these different stages. There will be some links in there, so it's important to click them and, uh, uh, and you will be taken usually to our website uh, where those kinds of links uh, link to, okay. So this is, uh, uh, this, as you can see, these kinds of topics introduce the, uh, the Bell Foundation's uh, EL assessments uh, framework for schools. Uh, and, uh, and sort of through the application of these different uh, types of videos and uh, different kinds of interactive activities. Uh, 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 just to explain that in the menu on the left, if you see a green dot there, that's the task you are on now. If you see a gray dot, that means that that task has been uh, completed. Uh, if there isn't one yet, that means that either you haven't visited it yet, you haven't done that yet, or that task is actually optional. Uh, and so therefore you could just skip that one. Um, okay, from uh, task, from module two, this is where the practical stuff starts. Uh, so uh, this activity, working with individual uh, descriptors, is actually where we ask you to drag and drop uh, the different descriptors from the framework uh, onto the different bands. Obviously, you can see that there's fewer of them uh, than in the actual uh, framework, because of course there's too many in the actual uh, framework to do in a, in, a, in a shorter task like this, but it gives you some practice of trying to uh, uh, get, a, get a sort of a sense uh, of uh, where these different descriptors fit uh, uh, under those different bands. So all you, you, you need to do here is to simply drag them uh, onto the different uh, bands. And uh, once you've done them all, I'm obviously doing this completely randomly uh, at the moment, uh, but once you've uh, placed them all, and there's one more here, then you can scroll back down here, click check, and you're going to get uh, 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 a feedback uh, how much you uh, were able to get. 
Uh, we suggest that this task is done actually without looking at the framework, but just trying to figure out with, uh, from the wording of these descriptors uh, 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 where you think they might fit on the basis of the overall bound descriptors. But of course, you could simply just uh, work with the uh, assessment framework uh, a copy of that yourself. Uh, so that's uh, that, that's an interactive activity. Of course, these different uh, uh, th these descriptors will be different if you are uh, working through the secondary version of this course. The descriptors will be different because, of course, then you are working with the secondary version of the framework. Uh, okay, another uh, uh, task uh, here under module two is when you get to practice uh, speaking. So what what you have here is uh, a series of three tasks. So you can see stage one is assessment, stage two is uh, setting targets, and stage three is uh, choosing strategies. So each of these opens in a separate uh, window. And so I'll just wait for that uh, here. Again, this is an interactive activity. So in here, uh, we are of course not going to play this are uh, all, but I'm just going to give you an idea of what kind of task there is. So uh, uh, embedded in this video is a vi uh, audio recording of a learner, uh, which is here. And uh, uh, you do have access to a transcript of that learner as well. So at this point, you can download the transcript of the sample uh, in here. So Again, we encourage you to uh, listen to that first before you read that, of course. And then once you've done that, uh, you are going to be asked to express a view about which uh, band that is. And so once you've done that, the rest of the video is going to provide you with feedback of what the Bell Foundation's view on that is. Uh, so that's the first part of this task. Um, the second part is setting targets based uh, on this initial assessment. And so here, uh, so we then uh, ask you to consider what targets you think you might uh, uh, set the learner. And then what follows is the feedback with, uh, with our ideas and our justification for that. And so uh, finally, the last part is strategies. Uh, and so now that we have the target, what uh, strategies would be relevant for this learner? Uh, and so uh, the task here uh, will be uh, to uh, consider uh, at least one, uh, one strategy per target that we have set. Throughout these videos, there are links to our uh, to some resources from our website, like great ideas and classroom guidance and strategies to support EA learners. So you can just simply click these and you'll be taken to that to those pages uh, to download them. Uh, so uh, if you see this, uh, this sort of globe icon, that means that uh, there's a resource linked to from within the video. Uh, so um, that's uh, that's how it's organized. Then uh, there is also task 2.3, which is about writing, and the structure is exactly the same. It's simply that you can download a writing sample here and then go through the same process and get feedback from us. Uh, there is also an optional task here, task uh, 2.4, which, uh, which is where we are trying to give you an idea of how you could approach this by talking you through this kind of process, assessment, uh, 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 setting targets and choosing strategies in these three videos. So here uh, uh, you've got 20 minutes of uh, myself talking you through uh, the, the thinking process. Uh, so uh, analyzing the uh, uh, analyzing the, the sample of a learner's uh, writing in this case, uh, using the uh, in this case primary writing uh, page from the framework. Uh, and uh, so you can basically think how how you could think about this process and uh, 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 how you could analyze a sample uh, in 
real time. This, these videos have been recorded as unscripted. They are trying to be as, as real as humanly possible uh, while it's, uh, being watched in, you know, in an online environment. So there's free videos here of that kind. This is completely optional, but hopefully you would, you would find this useful. And finally, I'm just going to uh, show you the uh, task three, uh, three one and three two from the last module, and then show you how to download these uh, uh, the certificates uh, at, the, uh, at the end of this overview. So here uh, we've got uh, a task uh, called from language to strategies. So as I was saying before, uh, the idea here is that uh, we are looking at uh, there's a there's a recording of a learner speaking first that you can listen to and also download the transcript of the speaking sample and then uh, we're trying to uh, uh, map that language back onto the descriptors from from the framework uh, and the feedback here is provided either you can read this here by clicking the plus buttons or you can play the audio uh, uh, from here. Uh, uh, to see how what you thought uh, corresponds with uh, our the Bell Foundation view. Uh, stage two of this task now is uh, we've, you've got uh, this interactive activity here where we're asking you to, this is the evidence, the excerpts from, uh, from that uh, learners speaking, and we are asking you to match uh, different aspects of the language uh, uh, with that. So for example, we've got basic family vocabulary. So if you think that that's it, you can move that up here. Uh, prepositions, we see prepositions used, uh, we can move them up here. And then uh, we're also asking you to select uh, two targets based on these when you are done. So you've got uh, different targets, you can move them over here. And when you're done, you can click and check uh, how it corresponds uh, with uh, with our assessments, and then uh, you're going to get a short textual uh, feedback from us uh, at the end of this activity. And finally, the last part of this activity is uh, targets to strategy. So that's the that's the um, discussion forum I was talking uh, about. Uh, so. Here, the idea is to, to, uh, for you to write a short post about what strategies you would choose for this learner based on this assessment and their targets from before. So you would go here, uh, you have the question uh, described here, you click reply, and once you've posted your, uh, your, uh, uh, your, your thoughts about which strategies would be relevant, after 30 minutes, if you come back to here, you're going to see our feedback and anything that any other participant has uh, written into here in the past, so you can compare. Okay. Uh, and the final assignment uh, is, simply put, you've got a choice of three different uh, samples to choose from that you could assess. This is the, uh, these are writing samples. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we're asking you that you do all all of the ATS sequence, that is to say, assessments, targets, and, uh, and and strategies in one go. But once you've done that, you can watch these videos with our feedback, and that completes the course. Uh, and so the last section here then is we are asking you to provide us with feedback by completing this form here, which uh, which is. Again, it should take you just five minutes. And once you've done that, uh, once you've visited this page, you can go here and download your certificate, which is quite simple. You just simply click here, view certificate, and it will generate it for you. Now, just important thing to mention very, very briefly, before I go back to the last couple of slides of the presentation, is that if you want for your name to display correctly, uh, on the certificate, it's very important that under your profile, uh, you have your actual first name and surname the way you want for it to display uh, on that certificate. So in order to do that, you can click here, go to your profile, and uh, somewhere here you will have uh, yes, first name and, uh, and surname displayed here. If this is different, 
uh, from what you would want uh, to see on the certificate, then you can just click edit and you could edit that from here. Uh, okay, so uh, that's it in relation to this. So I'm just going to uh, do the last very short section uh, and that is to just very briefly go through, uh, just as a recap, uh, how to access these courses. And then we'll move on to the questions, which you should have 15 minutes for or so, at the very least. So, okay, the uh, how to access the course. Uh, uh, so this is the link, it's quite long. Uh, so an easier way is to go to our website, Bell, uh, dash foundation uh, dot org dot uk uh, then go to EL program uh, go to training and then there's a new section there called free on demand training and if you click that you will see this page and at the bottom of this page if you scroll down you will see links to either primary version of this course or the secondary version of this course uh, and um uh, these are, of course, uh, th this is what you see whilst you're on a Moodle. Uh, and just to remind you that if you're going to, uh, 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 if you're going directly to Moodle, then uh, uh, these courses are under the category Massive Open Online Courses MOOCs. That's where you find them. If you're not going to that page that I was just talking about, but, uh, uh, but you're simply logging into Moodle and you're looking for them there. Uh, and so, okay. So just finally, in order uh, in order to access these courses on Moodle, of course, uh, you would need to be signed uh, signed up, and then you can self enroll. So uh, if you need to sign up, you're not signed up, uh, registered with us yet. Then when you enter the, uh, the 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 Moodle site, please click login, and then actually uh, you'll be able to sign up. Uh, there's a link to to sign up. Very simple form. Uh, then you will be able to log in. Uh, you will see our dashboard. Uh, you can click Massive Open Online Courses. That will allow you to enroll. Uh, and uh, and then you will access the course. And I think this is essentially uh, the end of my presentation. So hopefully we have some questions. Hopefully this wasn't too fast. <laughs> uh, I know that there's quite a lot, but hopefully it gives you a good overview of uh, what we have and what the course looks like. So. Uh, thank, yes. you. thank you, Camille. No, not too fast. You're pretty good. Pretty good with timing. We're on <laughs> like four forty three. So, and um, really, really good timing um, right. on that. So thank you so much for for that. We've had loads of questions. In fact, I'm quite right. struggling to keep up. With them. <laughs> um, some are kind of more broadly related to kind of assessment in general. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm I'm going to probably talk first about the ones more specifically about the, the course and then maybe try and pick up on some of the broader yep. assessment questions. Um, so one of the questions that we received was whether do the modules that you describe practice mm -hmm. um, assessing listening and reading skills? That was something someone came through with. Uh, so uh, we didn't do that because uh, because of the nature of this course, which is entirely online, and uh, uh, because it lacks tutors' presence, uh, it, it, it's 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 simply more accessible to have something that is a productive skill, such as uh, uh, so. Unfortunately, no. Uh, I think that that will be more available from our regular courses, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which is where the tutors are. Uh, uh, it, it, it's just that we made a decision that because of the nature of this course, where you have no interaction with uh, any actual teacher or tutor, uh, then it will be quite difficult uh, to uh, to actually be able to, to teach those particular skills. So that's uh, so the answer uh, is sadly no, uh, but that's the rationale why. Uh, yeah. yeah. We did investigate it and, and you know, in the future, was, as tech becomes a bit more sophisticated and certainly as the tech that we have access to becomes a bit more sophisticated, yeah. um, we, you know, we, it's certainly something we will look to, okay. look to yeah. Yeah. It's important, um, you know, to, to make sure that we're thinking oh, yeah. about all those language domains um, but yeah I would agree with Camille I'd encourage you to have a look at our other assessment uh, assessment courses I think I would also uh, just add that obviously the other constraints is simple time in this course which is three hours if 
this course was six hours, that would be also a different story. But uh, I think that was also a, a sort of separate consideration as well. Yeah. And another question we've had through is how different are the primary and secondary versions? So they've said, if I work through, I feel working in an all through school, um, would you recommend completing both of them? Uh, well, uh, obviously the primary uh, is different in terms of the actual framework. So I, I'm sure that's, that's rather obvious, but there are different samples as well. Uh, uh, provided, but um, other than that, they're actually quite similar. Uh, there will be some minor differences, but but largely the difference lies in uh, the different samples. Uh, uh, because of course, you know, uh, if you are a primary uh, uh, teacher, that you're not necessarily going to be working with Macbeth, uh, and so they are they are specific in that way. But uh, by and large, these courses are very, very similar to, to each other. So I think I wouldn't recommend uh, uh, doing the other one unless, uh, well, if you are in an all through school, then of course you will be working with different learners and therefore you will be using different versions of the framework. So that makes sense from that perspective. But uh, other than that, uh, they are pretty much the same. We had a similar question about somebody working in a school where the the the, the learners were, I think, from age nine to thirteen, and I so see. struggling to work out whether the primary or the secondary okay. version was most. Yeah. I would probably say have a look at look at have a look. Have a look. Yeah. Well, there's 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 nothing to stop you, of course, from enrolling on both and just uh, just 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 see what they look like and, uh, uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. I agree. Um, I've got another question here from Chris. Um, so he's saying, I'm thinking of, of ITT se uh, secondary PGC mm -hmm. trainees who might not know of much about EAL initially. Right. Um, is this course um, still, achievable for, still achievable for them? Um, I think um, he's, I, I think so. Would, would I we think agree? so. Yeah, I would agree. I think so. It's, uh, it, it's a sort of a... a, 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 a it can act as a gentle introduction. It's it's not full of uh, terminology, shall we say. Uh, we do speak to uh, uh, mainstream teachers and uh, would not expect that, you know, you'd be experts in English language or linguistics or anything like that. So absolutely, I, I think it's perfectly accessible uh, to people who are new to EAL or, or, or new to English language teaching in that sense of support. So yes, yes, definitely. And keep in mind, just that uh, sorry, just to uh, that obviously, because a lot of this feedback is delivered in videos, uh, then you know you can replay them, uh, as opposed to if you were in a room with a with a trainer, and you can't exactly replay a trainer in real time, the, the actual real person. But here also we have this; you can go back and listen to uh, uh, to what you heard again. So hopefully that that's also helpful in, in that way. Somebody's asked if we if if you can fail the course. No, <laughs> in fact, uh, if you look carefully, you could actually probably jump around that course if you wanted to and do it completely out of sequence. Uh, you can't uh, fail that course. Uh, 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 that is to say, if you say say that you are doing one of these activities that I was showing, like drag and drop, and uh, you are going to get feedback, and you are going to be in number of places, you are going to be sort of you know encouraged to do it again. But actually, uh, uh, you can still move on. Uh, so we just simply take the view that, you know, uh, of course, the uh, participants want to learn. And so, uh, but no, you can't. And I, I would also uh, add something else. That's uh, when we are talking about things like uh, feedback, for example, when, say, you set the strategies on the basis of so that, that, uh, that APS sequence, um, if you set certain targets, and they are maybe slightly different from what we are suggesting. That doesn't mean necessarily that you are wrong on some level. It just simply means that you that uh, you know you might have taken a different aspect of of the learner's writing that we haven't because again it is just one video. Even more so with strategies. In fact, uh, we suggest a couple of strategies in the videos that are applicable. But frankly, I could probably uh, make other videos and to make every. Uh, strategy that we have work for these learners because obviously there is so many different ways in which you can support uh, a learner. So a lot of the time there is no one answer uh, uh, to these. Uh, uh, and so therefore, you know, it's it, it, it's not a test basically as, as such. So we only ask that you work your way through the entire course. And uh, again, the, the certificate is of completion, not of passing.
Uh, so that's that's another thing to say at the end. There. So no, no, uh, you do not need to pass that as such. So Kamel, how would you advise, I know you did mention this slightly at the beginning, but how would you advise using this course to provide whole school or department level uh, professional learning or CPD to staff? Um, so you obviously, you know, like you can enroll mm. an individual, but it, you know, like yeah. it, hopefully it will be a good opportunity Absolutely, absolutely. For a whole school or a whole department or a year group to... to... Yeah, so I, 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 as we said, yes, uh, it can be used as an oral school training. I think, uh, well, if you think about these three different modules, the first one is just a simple introduction. So that kind of thing can probably be done individually because it's simply uh, understanding, you know, uh, how the framework works, what is it, how we design this and why uh, uh, this area is important. But the module two and three, because they are practical, what I would suggest is to uh, do them in a sort of blended learning kind of way. That is to say, uh, you can, your teachers or, 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 or whoever else is involved in this uh, can do them um, online, perhaps even in pairs, for example, or in groups. There's nothing to stop people, uh, you know, working through these together, for example. Uh, and I would follow that uh, those activities then with, uh, you know, trying to replicate this using the actual samples that you have in your own school from actual learners. Uh, there's a number of times uh, that we mentioned through the course, so uh, uh, in the feedback, in, in these different videos, that uh, we are actually only assessing a sample because that's all we have on the course. We do not have actual learners. You will have learners uh, uh, in the different classes. Uh, you know, you will hear them uh, speak or write in all sorts of different contexts. So you actually have more to go on than these individual samples that we are able to provide you on the course because of the nature of them and the constraints of such courses. So I, what I would do is watch the videos, do these activities, and then try to uh, choose the actual real life. And that's something that you can do in an actual classroom uh, together as teachers, as, as inset. I think that's probably the best uh, the best way to, to approach this. Uh, um, you know, uh, kind of follow it up with uh, some more practice. Because, uh, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. In yeah, no, absolutely. That's really, really, really clear. And I, I think we'll be hopefully, you know, in terms of thinking about it, we, it, it was the sort of thing that we wanted to develop to ensure that people had as wide access as we can and that, you know, and that money wasn't a barrier. So hopefully, yes. that, you know, providing a this, this open course will, will sort of, you know, enable that. Yeah, um, hopefully, yeah. Um, we've had a few questions um, more specifically about the EAL assessment framework. So I'm going to do my best to answer some of those, but I would encourage people to take a look on our website as well. I'll drop the link in in a moment on the EAL assessment page because that you'll find the EAL assessment framework itself, um, but you will also find a number of other documents, including uh, the research underpinning the development of our EAL assessment framework for schools. Um, so I think we've had a question about whether the assessment is linked to a language in common with the stages and levels of where a learner would be. We've also had questions about whether the, the descriptors are similar to the common European framework um, and other assessment frameworks. Um, what I would say is that the framework was developed by a, a team of academics in 2016-2017. In um, and it was informed by a, 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 a big research uh, project where they looked at a range of different frameworks um, in the UK, but, but much wider than that, you know, looking in Australia and Canada um, and the US as well. Um, in order to establish um, what we the, the descriptors within the framework. Um, and then working out which of those which of those descriptors um, were relevant. There was a, a, a process they used um, no more marking where uh, descriptors were organized, um, you know, from um, early stage to later stage in terms of kind of progression. So I'd encourage you, I'm not probably not doing this justice, but I would encourage you to go and have a look at the research base um, in terms of how the framework was developed. So it's it's not, it, we have, certainly haven't copied from, a, from another framework. You will see similarities between all language like ass assessment frameworks. I mean, I could certainly look across a, a few of them and see and see some similarities um 
but but no, it's 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 very much informed um, by a research base. So it's 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 kind of, to my knowledge, the only um, evidence informed, robust sort of framework in 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 the UK um, at the moment. I'd encourage you, as I said, to take a look on the on on the website and look at the the research base around it. Um, I think there was some other questions around, are there any other similar assessments or frameworks being used across the UK to assess EAL learners and new arrivals? Yes, there are. Um, I'm aware of Nasea, Camille, do you, uh, what the other? Yes, yes that's, that's the one I'm thinking of uh, largely. Uh, Hounslow no. has a framework as well, no. Hounslow Education Services. So there are definitely are others available. Um, I think maybe ours is the only free one. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but, um, but I'm sure, I mean, please feel free to put in the chat if you are aware of, 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 of other, others that are free, available. Um, there was a question around how many local authorities are, are using the framework. To be honest with you, we're not tracking this information. We probably should. We did in the early stages. I'm aware of at least 15 local authorities who officially use our framework. Um, the uh, the island of Jersey, in terms of the government of Jersey, have adopted the framework um, as well um, as their official framework on the island. Um, and I, yeah, I'm sure it is being used wider than that. We also know it's being used internationally as well. Um, so hopefully that answers some of those, those questions around the assessment framework more broadly. Um, there was a question about whether we can use this as a language assessment for providing access arrangements for IB. I don't know the answer to that, I'm afraid. I don't know if anybody else on 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 the um uh, on the webinar does. I'm afraid, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to answer that. I'm 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 not sure. Camille, I, I don't know whether you do either. No, I don't. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure. Okie dokie. Um, so I, we're pretty much um, out of time. So um, thank you so much, Camille, for a really um, clear and very informative presentation and also for all your hard work in developing um, the MOOC itself. Camille has put hours and hours into <laughs> providing, the, in, into developing and getting this course together. So um, we're, we're, we're really pleased with where it's at and, and yeah. I, hope, um, I hope it's well received. Um, so before we close the webinar, I just want to remind you that you'll get uh, an email tomorrow with a link to a video recording of this webinar um, and also a survey. Um, just to very briefly flag a few things that are coming up from the Bell Foundation. So we've got a couple of courses coming up, um, embedding EAL assessment, which will be on the 4th of June, and then how to adapt teaching for learners who use EAL. Um, it's another one of our on online courses on the 17th of September. Um, webinars, I think, Camille, if you click on one page, there are a few webinars of ECT modules as well. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's all no worries. <laughs> yeah, so we've got um, our freely available ECT modules, which you'll be, be able to access via uh, that QR code there. Camille, if you can click on webinars. So we've got a webinar tomorrow on intervention groups using our support strategies with intervention groups, um, this time focusing on the primary classroom. The recording of the secondary version is up on the website. Um, we're also doing something on EAL learners and science, which is on the 5th of June. So please go and register for those if you're free. And then the final thing is just to flag up this guidance, um, which links to the webinar we'll be running tomorrow around strategies and guidance to support EAL learners in intervention groups. Um, so that's available to download uh, from the website now. Um, so thank you so much for taking part in today's webinar. And we really look forward to seeing you next time. And we are going to stop recording um, and end the meeting now. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.